If you go, if you go back that far, uh, you would find that um, the Earth's climate was very different from from how it is today. And there's no, there's undoubtedly a time they found fossils on Antarctica. There's undoubtedly a time when when Antarctica was was lush and green. A forest that can survive without the sun. Something like that would throw a wrench into what we know about plant biology. But it is real, just not in the way you might think. Here is Graham Hancock's discovery of a massive rainforest beneath the Antarctic ice. So, how could such a forest even exist? Where would it get its energy from if not the sun? To answer these questions, we have to take a journey to the past. So join us as we take a look at the vast Antarctic region and see what lies in its ancient fossils. An extreme region. Antarctica takes up most of the Antarctic region. It is a frigid, isolated area located in the Southern Hemisphere and bounded by the Antarctic Convergence. The Convergence is an irregular line of latitude where the cold, southward-flowing Antarctic waters meet the warmer waters of the global oceans. Antarctica takes up about 20% of the Southern Hemisphere. It's the fifth largest continent in total area, surpassing both Oceania and Europe. Antarctica is different from other continents due to the absence of a native human population. There are no sovereign nations within Antarctica. Seven countries staked defined territorial claims before the signing of the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. But there has been a long debate on when Antarctica was first discovered by humans. When talking about who or how Antarctica was discovered, the name James Cook is often brought up. He's a very important figure that is responsible for our understanding of this continent. The notion of a vast southern continent, referred to as Terra Australis, had been hypothesized since ancient times to balance the known continents in the northern hemisphere. However, no conclusive surveys have been conducted to verify its existence. In the late 18th century, the British government entrusted James Cook with the mission of exploring and locating this presumed southern continent. Cook's exploration in 1770, particularly around most of New Zealand, debunked the notion that these islands were part of Terra Australis. In his renowned second voyage spanning from 1772 to 1775, James Cook executed a circumnavigation of the globe at a southern latitude, unknowingly completing a circuit around Antarctica. Although he came close to discovering Antarctica's mainland, Cook redirected his course to Tahiti for ship supplies. Subsequently, he made a second attempt, albeit unsuccessful, to find Terra Australis. Upon returning to Britain, Cook's detailed accounts of his expeditions effectively dispelled the long-held belief in the existence of Terra Australis, convincing many that it was a myth. Matthew Flinders, in his 1814 book A Voyage to Terra Australis, said that Terra Australis was a misconception and proposed that the name be given to the closest continent discovered at that time, which we now recognize as Australia. But later on in the 19th century, humanity would indeed find Terra Australis, which is what we now refer to as Antarctica, that we cannot name it Terra Australis anymore because that name was given to Australia. While Antarctica's formal discovery occurred later in the 19th century, Cook's exploration yielded valuable insights into the Antarctic region, allowing further explorations to better chart and map the area around the South Pole. But Graham Hancock suggests that Antarctica was discovered much earlier than the 19th century in his book Fingerprints of the Gods, The Evidence of Earth's Lost Civilization. Graham Hancock's Take on Antarctica Hancock suggests the existence of an advanced prehistoric civilization, serving as the common ancestor to all subsequent ancient cultures. He suggests that this civilization, which thrived until the end of the last ice age, passed on advanced knowledge in areas such as astronomy, architecture, and mathematics to its successors. According to Hancock's theory, a significant pole shift occurred in 10,450 BC, altering the position of Antarctica. Before this event, Antarctica was situated farther from the South Pole than its current location and post-shift. It assumed its present position. Hancock also believes that this ancient advanced civilization mapped the entire world, including Antarctica. There are claims that at least two nautical maps from the 16th century depict the outline of Antarctica's coastline, a coastline hidden beneath a mile of ice for millennia. 
The most renowned map is the 1513 creation by Ottoman navigator Admiral Piri ibn Haji Mehmed, commonly known as Piri Reis. Discovered in rubble at Istanbul's Topkapi Palace in 1929, this partially damaged map has stirred considerable interest. It seemingly accurately positions Africa, Europe, and South America in terms of longitude, more than 200 years before John Harrison's sea clock. Remarkably, it also shows the north coast of Antarctica, predating its formal recognition as a landmass by 300 years. Peary's annotations reference an Atlantic map by Columbus, which is now lost, and others dating back to Alexander's era around 300 BC. In his work, Maps of the Ancient Sea Kings, Professor Charles Hapgood proposes that maps like Piri Reyes's suggest an advanced seafaring civilization around 12,000 years ago. Hapgood suggests that remnants of this ancient knowledge survived in the Alexandrian Library until its demise in AD 640 and were later incorporated into subsequent maps. While Graham Hancock revisited these ideas, the reality may be less romantic. Throughout history, the notion of a significant landmass in the Southern Hemisphere was prevalent to balance those in the North. Cartographers of the time, adhering to standard practice, invented an imaginary land known as Terra Incognita Australis, or the Unknown Southern Land. This fabrication appears on various maps, notably the 1531 Orontius Phineas map, frequently cited to support Hapgood's assertions. Some argue that on this and similar maps, Terra Australis corresponds to Australia. Piri's notes about this southernmost region describe it as recently found but not fully known, mentioning the presence of large snakes and remarking that these shores are very hot. It doesn't align with the Antarctica we recognize today, and we found ancient ice cores in Antarctica dating back around 500,000 years, meaning this region has been covered in ice for at least this long, longer than the existence of these ancient maps. But what if we go even further into the past, beyond 500,000 years? How about 90 million years? What did Antarctica look like this long ago? Ancient life in Antarctica. Antarctica, known today as the most remote and desolate continent, once harbored a lush temperate rainforest approximately 90 million years ago during the age of dinosaurs. This revelation was given to us by sedimentary layers buried 25 meters beneath the seafloor of Pine Island Glacier, preserving fossils in an exceptionally rare core. This core offers insight into Cretaceous ecosystems at latitudes so close to the South Pole, a mere 500 miles away. The lead author, Johann Klages, said that it is the southernmost Cretaceous evidence ever recovered on the planet. They were the first ones to ever drill there in that environment. But drilling there was not easy for the team. The challenging process of obtaining the core took place during a 2017 expedition aboard the research vessel Polar Stern. However, the extraction was difficult as the specialized drilling machine, despite several days per core, initially encountered quartzitic sandstone layers devoid of fossils. Furthermore, advancing ice sheets from a nearby island posed a threat to the equipment. Faced with this challenge and on the verge of evacuation, Clagus and his team decided on a final three-meter core. This new core was completely different from the earlier light-colored sandstone. The team had struck geological gold this core was a dark hue, which meant that it was rich in organic materials. The team immediately saw that something special was going on. They saw these amazing, pristine, complete dense networks of fossil roots in the core connected down to the core base. To put into perspective how rich in organic material this core was, Clegues said that if you were to drill a hole near your house, you'd find something just as rich in organic material. This core was full of pollen and spores and diverse assemblages. But what does this all mean? Forests that can survive without the sun. Over the next three years, the research team examined the core, unveiling extraordinary new insights into the ancient rainforest that once covered Antarctica. The remarkably well-preserved plant fossils depict a swampy ecosystem dominated by conifer trees, reminiscent of modern rainforests in New Zealand. This biodiverse Antarctic landscape with its plant fossils suggests the potential presence of dinosaurs and insects. Clegg said that it's likely that there were insects and dinosaurs, but we can't say for sure. The team can only confidently state facts about the paleobotany that they found in the core. The surprising aspect is that these forests thrived at an extraordinarily southern latitude of 82 degrees, subjecting them to complete darkness for approximately four months each year. 
Unlike modern rainforests that depend on continuous sunlight, this ancient ecosystem had to adapt to an alternative energy source during the extended dark winter. The key to their survival during this period may have been exceptionally high levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. This discovery implies that CO2 concentrations during the Cretaceous era were much higher than previously thought, possibly reaching 1,680 parts per million. To provide context, current CO2 levels exceed 400 parts per million, with a rapid increase attributed to human activities. The elevated CO2 levels indicate a warmer Cretaceous Earth and suggest the absence of ice cover at the South Pole. Cleggs and his colleagues estimate that the mean annual temperature in the rainforest hovered around 12 degrees C, with summer temperatures averaging approximately 19 degrees C. According to Cleggs, the warmth during that era was truly exceptional, surprising both the research team and climate modelers. The unexpected discovery indicated that Antarctica was devoid of ice, boasting complete vegetation and remarkably high CO2 concentrations. The research not only provides a glimpse into the Antarctic forest, but also gives us valuable lessons for our current climate challenges. Cleggs and his colleagues conducted simulations, imagining Earth with similar CO2 levels to the Cretaceous period. The results showed that the presence of polar ice sheets significantly alters the outcome reflecting too much sunlight and preventing the same elevated global temperatures. So the presence of an ice sheet makes a huge difference, even if you have very high CO2 concentrations. This understanding is crucial for considering effective measures to preserve ice sheets. The knowledge from these extreme climates can help us understand our potential future and inform us to better make decisions regarding climate change. It's because these extreme climates show us what has happened on the planet already. After all, they show us what a greenhouse climate looks like. This suggests that life can somehow find a way to thrive in even the most extreme conditions, conditions that can show up in the future. But you'd be surprised to find that underneath the icy exterior of Antarctica, the area is teeming with life today. Modern Life in Antarctica Researchers used a massive hot water drill to uncover a previously unknown ecosystem beneath the Larsen Ice Shelf. Located around 1,640 feet below the ice surface, this secret habitat was identified through a distinctive groove observed in a satellite image of the ice sheet. The team didn't expect to find anything, but they drilled down there anyway, and they found thousands of amphipods, which are tiny crustaceans. Suffice it to say the team was very excited at this discovery. Researchers also found even more proof of ancient life in Antarctica. They found ancient DNA that might be as old as one million years. Not as old as the ice core we mentioned earlier. But the odd thing about this discovery is that scientists don't know which species this sample belongs to. They guess that it most likely comes from diatoms, which is a type of phytoplankton. But once again, this discovery gives us information about our potential future. These diatoms existed at the same time as an ancient global warming period. Thanks to this, we're able to derive information on how marine life would react to climate change in the future. Antarctica is a very interesting region on Earth. Let us know in the comments what excites you the most and be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more.